Rarely in the history of local government does the roads, rates and rubbish sector get to lift its head high. Tomorrow, Her Excellency the Governor will open a $171 million cultural centre in Chatswood called the Concourse, with a 1,000 seat concert hall, a 500 seat theatre, library, restaurants and retail spaces. The Mayor responsible for this vision and his Chief Administrator assert it won't go broke. It's not a PPP, public-private partnership. There's not a poker machine in sight. It's been done with ratepayers' money, levies plus borrowings. The concourse, it is hoped, will transform the cultural life of two million people on the North Shore and help local government in its campaign for recognition in the Australian Constitution. This is the Concourse, Willoughby City Council's bold and risky zinc-skinned sculptural creation. Architecture by Francis Jones, Moran Thorpe. 20,000 square metres of ambition and public benefit to try to forge a new image for the often derided mediocrity emerging from usually cash-strapped local government. You've got to have delivery, and that's where it takes too long sometimes to get delivery, but as long as the, uh, it comes in the end, great. Pat Riley is the gruff, tough Mayor of Willoughby. He's held the mayoralty for coming up to 15 years. He's had stints in the Labor and Liberal parties but proclaims he's fiercely independent. His opponents on the council say he's ruthlessly used his numbers to steamroll the project through. I actually took it to referendum because I'm a great believer in if you've got major infrastructure programs you're going to put into being, at least at the local government area, the people have to have the maximum opportunity of say. So it went to a referendum and we came back with a yes. This is an investment, very much an investment. It's a, a twofold investment. On one hand, it's a, a social investment for the community, and the other, it's a long-term financial investment so that this becomes one of the income asset producing parts of the city of Willoughby. Chatswood, a mini Hong Kong on the lower north shore of Sydney, apparently has feng shui aplenty. A 30% Chinese population among the 70,000 residents with 2,600 high and medium rise home units with another thousand to come. When Her Excellency the Governor, Mari Bashir, officially opens the concourse on Saturday, it will be the culmination of 13 years of effort. The council and its architects have turned the old Willoughby Civic Centre site with adjoining properties into a central community and performing arts centre, doubling the library capacity to 5,000 square metres with a US imported book return conveyor belt and a Chinese language indexing system. The concourse is bang in the middle of Chatswood CBD, two minutes from the railway station and bus interchange. Financially, it has been achieved by leveraging the council's property assets in one of the most valuable commercial and retail precincts in the country. But, there's always a but, what are the compromises and trade-offs and where's the money coming from? In 2008, Port Macquarie Hastings Council's equally visionary Glasshouse Cultural Centre came to grief. Costs blew out, the mayor and council were sacked, unfairly according to some, the Glasshouse is now up and running to critical acclaim, winning tourism and venue awards, but the lessons were salutary. Nick Tobin is General Manager of Willoughby City Council. His reputation as an executive and financial administrator is now on the line with the concourse project. We looked at all our assets, we looked at what we could sell, what we could lease, we looked at our Section 94 contributions from local developers and we also looked at how much we could borrow for this, this uh, project. So what we've ended up with is a project of $171 million with $55 million debt on it. 25 of that will actually be paid off in the first seven years and then the remaining $30 million will be paid off over 40 years as this is a, really a lifetime project and uh, the funding from this site will actually repay that loan. So the income that we get out of the rentals, out of the parking areas and eventually out of the actual performing arts 
parts uh, facilities will pay off the debt and maintain it for the future. You can't go broke? No, we can't go broke on this site. Um, we have really been very, very careful in the way we put this funding plan together. We made sure that the income is solid. The retail area here is very solid. We're creating a new destination here for, for eating and enjoying yourself. Uh, and that's where the people seem to want to be able to do those things now. And I think you know, Chats would be one of the number one destinations in Sydney. Greg Curry, an experienced venue and performing arts manager, won a competitive tender to operate the concert hall, theatre and pavilion. His job is to turn the performance spaces into a going concern within two years. This is a thousand seat concert hall. It's based on the traditional classic European style. Its acoustics are excellent for unamplified music. It will also, um, it is flexible enough to be um, totally viable for amplified music as well. And again, this room will have everything in it from stand-up comedy to you know, Dame Kiri de Kanawa in April to symphonic music in here. It will be, again, very mixed, very versatile. It's a very warm room. Mayor Riley says his council's effort could help to turn the public perception of local government to one of dynamic potential and particularly to support the coming national referendum to enshrine local government in the Australian Constitution. I believe that's the future. We have to t start looking at things that way. I mean, uh, local government, the way it currently is, has a lot of blockades when you get to a point. You know, the, uh, you can come up against a brick wall because you're the beast of state government. Destination 2036. Last month in Dubbo, new local government minister Don Page called 350 mayors and council general managers together to start sweeping reforms for local government through a review of the Local Government Act. Everything is now on the table, the minister says, including voluntary amalgamations and rate pegging. While the sector looks at the concourse as an example of what a well-heeled council like Willoughby can do, the Australian Local Government Association is currently devising the referendum question to amend the Australian Constitution to allow local government to be partially but directly funded from the national taxation base, including GST revenues. I, as Minister and the Government, uh, support the idea of local government being recognised in the Federal Constitution, uh, particularly if that support leads to financial arrangements that enable the federal government to give local government uh, money uh, directly rather than having to come through the state government as, as is the case at the moment. I think that would, uh, we get better use of the money coming from the taxpayers' money coming from the feds that go to the local government. And I think also given the, the financial situation with local councils across the state, if they can tap into a source of revenue, whether it be GST, it's probably the most practical one, a percentage of GST revenue, then that would be very helpful to local government. According to Mark Ferguson, president of the Local Government Managers Association, a new era of probity and professional management for local government is what's needed to unlock ideas and new ways of doing things at the grassroots. If you look at the vertical fiscal imbalance that occurs in Australia, the federal government is essentially the primary revenue source of, uh, of both the state and local government. New South Wales local government spends about six to seven billion dollars a year. We employ 50,000 people and yet the, new, the federal government, the funding is, is still only limited to about 10 per cent of our, of our revenue base. That needs to be reformed. That needs to, we, we need to look at additional federal funding and at the same time we need to look as a sector of how we can reduce our costs and look at other revenue opportunities to improve our revenue base to supplement our, uh, our current rating base. As the excited Mayor Pat Riley points to his baby, the grassroots sector will be hoping his council's judgement and financial acumen is vindicated through the concourse at Chatswood. Fingers crossed, Your Worship.